Chest compressions are not that rare in the delivery room. In fact, between one to two neonates per a thousand live births end up needing chest compressions. But studies have shown that chest compressions are often delayed or just done incorrectly. So today we're going to try to improve all of that. Hi, I'm Dr. Tala and I've been a neonatologist for 17 years and an NRP instructor even longer. And today, using this little doll, we're going to go over nine things that you need to know about delivering chest compressions. One, when do you start giving chest compressions? Well, you should all remember this number. If a baby's heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, then that's when a baby needs chest compressions. But it's not as easy as that. Remember that most of the time a baby is coding because of respiratory issues. So you have to make sure that you are adequately ventilating the baby, preferably with an alternate airway. So either intubated or an LMA, and you want to see some chest rise. So per NRP, you have to be giving 30 seconds of effective ventilation. And then if the heart rate is still below 60 beats per minute, you start chest compressions. Two, where do you actually administer the chest compressions? Well, you want to go halfway between the nipple line and the xiphoid process. Remember, the xiphoid process is that little pointy piece at the end of the sternum. So really, you end up giving chest compressions the lower third of the sternum. You don't want to give chest compressions over the ribs because you can break the ribs. And you don't want to give chest compressions over the xiphoid process either because you could actually damage the liver right underneath it. So really the lower third of the sternum exactly in the middle of the chest. Three, how do you position yourself to give the chest compressions? Well, the latest NRP edition recommends using the two thumb technique because according to research, it improves the coronary perfusion as well as increases systolic pressures. So basically we use the two thumbs on the lower part of the sternum, like we always said, and then wrap the rest of your hands around the baby's back. The fingers at the back do not have to be touching. Generally, the thumbs are touching or the thumbs are on top of each other. It is also recommended that you are standing at the head of the bed. So by this time, the airway is already secured and somebody is taking care of ventilation on the side. And it also leaves the belly area free for somebody to start trying to put lines in. Four, how much pressure do you put on the chest compressions? Well, ideally, you are trying to depress the chest by a third of its anterior posterior diameter. So you push down and then you release the pressure off the chest, but you still keep your thumbs on the chest wall. So press down a third of the anterior posterior diameter and then release the pressure, allowing the refilling of the heart. Five, what rate should we be giving the chest compressions at? Well, remember that chest compressions are always given with positive pressure ventilation. So what we're aiming for is 120 events in a minute. So it's a rate of chest compressions at 90 beats per minute and then positive pressure breaths at 30 beats per minute. So remember, when you're just giving positive pressure breaths without chest compressions, you're aiming for 40 to 60 breaths a minute. So when you're giving chest compressions, you're definitely slowing down the amount of positive pressure breaths that you're giving. So 90 and 30 for a total rate of 120 a minute. Six, how do we coordinate the chest compressions with the positive pressure breaths? Well, it's a ratio of three chest compressions and then one positive pressure breath. It's helpful to say one and two and three and breathe out aloud as you're doing this so everybody in the delivery room is on the same page. So one and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. What can often end up happening and has been shown in studies is that people end up going much faster with their chest compressions just because they're stressed out and they're nervous. So really remember that you're aiming for 120 beats per minute. There are some great songs that are 120 beats per minute, but I'm worried about YouTube copyright laws, but I'll link to a Spotify list below where you can kind of get what that rate should be at. Here is a metronome going at 120 beats a minute. So one and two and three and breathe. One and two and three and breathe. 
one and two and three and breathe. So that's 120 events a minute. Number seven, this is a quick reminder. As soon as you start giving chest compressions, put the oxygen up to FiO2 of 100%. When you're giving chest compressions, often the perfusion is not good at all and you don't really know what the saturation is. So anytime you're giving chest compressions, just dial up the FiO2 to 100%. Remember that. We've all been to lots of rooms where people are being given chest compressions and they're still on the 21%. Eight, when do you reassess with chest compressions? Well, after you've done 60 seconds of good chest compressions and ventilation, then stop and reevaluate if the heart rate is above 60. If at that point the heart rate is below 60, then you should continue, but you should also hopefully be ready to give some epinephrine. And nine, that's my last point. As soon as somebody starts giving chest compressions, somebody else should be starting to get the umbilical line ready and pulling the epinephrine and everything else. Obviously, a minute is not a long time. So if you've reached the point of giving chest compressions, you want to get everything moving really quickly. And that was it. Please like this video if you learned something. Now go watch our other videos on resuscitation. Thanks so much for being here.